So here I am at the corner of Paseo Victoria and El Camino del Norte. Paseo Victoria used to be called Colina Norte or Northville and they changed it to Victory Walk or Paseo Victoria. I'm here in Rancho Santa Fe which is considered to be the Beverly Hills of San Diego County which means there's not a shortage of money here. So when this peaceful neighborhood became interrupted by a media attention because of the Heaven's Gate incident right up this road here, the surrounding neighbors bought the old house, bulldozed it to the ground, and built a new one in its place. So the incident occurred up this road here, Paseo Victoria. Right up this driveway right here. And this address used to be 18241. The Heaven's Gate cult began in 1974 by Marshall Applewhite and Bonnie Nettles. Marshall came from a Presbyterian family and he hoped to be a Presbyterian minister someday. While attending Union Presbyterian Seminary, he met his wife and they had two children. He left the seminary to pursue a career in music. He was drafted into the army in 1954 and was discharged in 1956. Afterward, he earned a master's degree in music from the University of Colorado. He was employed at the University of Alabama and was fired after having a sexual relationship with a male student. After finding out about the affair, his wife left him in 1965 and they were officially divorced in 1968. He attempted to have a relationship with a woman in Texas after coming out as openly gay, but due to pressure from her family, she ended the relationship, and Applewhite resigned from his position at the University of St. Thomas, citing depression and emotional problems. In 1971, his dad died, causing him severe depression. Bonnie Nettles was a nurse with interests in biblical prophecy, theosophy, and esoterics. They met in 1972 and became close friends. She told him that their meeting was foretold to her by extraterrestrials. She made him believe he had a divine assignment. Afterwards, he claimed to have several visions. One of the visions was telling him he was chosen for a role like that of Jesus. On New Year's Day, January 1st, 1973, they set out on a spiritual journey road trip. It was here at Gold Beach, Oregon, while they were camping somewhere along this beach, that they both figured out what their purpose was on this earth. And in a letter written to her daughter, Terry, dated July 26, 1973, Bonnie Nettles said, We have finally come out of the wilderness and know what our mission is. It is definitely a big one. In fact, we have been sent to fulfill the scriptures the same as Jesus and others came to do. It has been revealed in John's revelations. I am not kidding, baby. This is for real. I knew it was something very important from the very beginning. They believed they were the two witnesses mentioned in Revelations chapter 11. The two witnesses. The two witnesses are killed. And the two witnesses are resurrected. In May of 1974, they had their first convert. It was one of their friends from Houston who began to follow them. In 1975, they had about 70 followers, and in 1976, they changed their names from Bonnie and Marshall to T and Doe, as in Fasolati Doe. 
Bonnie Nettles died of cancer in 1985, and afterwards, Applewhite encouraged his followers to see him as Jesus. Now you say, well, according to religious literature, I thought there was someone else that was going to come and be our Savior here at these end days, that that was going to be Christ's return. Well, the name Christ might be a little confusing, or the name Jesus, because the name Jesus, of course, of course, was the name given to the body that that mind that was indeed from the kingdom of heaven came and that mind was here 2,000 years ago, and that mind came for the express purpose of teaching humans how they could be saved, how they would not be plowed under at the end of the age. Well, we're at the end of the age. So the one or the mind that was in Jesus, what? That mind is in me? You'll have to decide that for yourself. I must admit that I am here again. After Bonnie Nettles' death, Marshall Applewhite became the leader of the cult, and eventually they settled down in Rancho Santa Fe, San Diego County. in a house that used to be right here in this location where this new house is. There were a total of 39 members that lived in the house that was here, and Marshall Applewhite, along with seven other men, went to Mexico to voluntarily castrate themselves. They didn't want to give in to the temptation of their sexual desires, so they had their testicles removed. There was a nurse living among them, so they tried to do an in-house castration that didn't go very well and the person almost died. So after that, they decided they would go to Mexico and have it done at a Mexican facility. It was in October of 1996 that they rented the Rancho Santa Fe Mansion in San Diego, California. It was close to this time that they began hearing about Comet hale -Bop. Applewhite told his followers they might have to exit their vehicles, which is what he meant as their bodies, voluntarily in order to get to the evolutionary kingdom above human, which was, according to Applewhite, the kingdom of heaven. He said he was waiting for a sign, and that sign came in the form of Comet hale -Bop, which became visible to the naked eye in January of 1997. In November 1996, a man from Houston took a charged coupled device image, or a CCD image, of the comet and said he could see an elongated object near hale Bob's tail. Word got out, and UFO enthusiasts concluded there was a spacecraft following hale Bob. It was actually a star the Houston man's computer sky viewing program failed to identify. Marshall Applewhite, being a UFO enthusiast, believed this was the sign he had been waiting for. Hale Bop came closest to the Earth on March 22nd, 1997, and from about the 22nd of March to the 24th of March, the 39 individuals mixed lethal doses of phenobarbital with pudding and applesauce, ate it, and then chased it with vodka. Going back in Google Earth history to about May of 2003, you can see what the old house looked like. It has a tennis court, and there's a swimming pool over here. This is the main structure. There are front steps right here, and you can see those front steps right here visible in this photo, which was taken the day they were removing the deceased out of the house. Here's another photo of those steps where they are removing somebody and putting them inside of this coroner's freezer truck. They all had similar close crop haircuts, similar uniforms, black shirts, black pants, the shirts had a triangle patch that said Heaven's Gate Away Team. They were all wearing black Nike shoes with either white socks or black socks. They all had plastic bags over their heads. 
and were partially covered with a square three foot by three foot purple blanket. The last two to take the lethal dose did not have plastic bags over their heads and were not partially covered with purple blankets. As mentioned earlier, so much media attention was brought to the area that the surrounding neighbors bought this house and the property, had it completely bulldozed to the ground and built it from the foundation up or built a new house from the foundation up. And this is what the property looked like after everything was bulldozed and removed. There's no tennis court, there's no house, there's no foundation, there's no swimming pool. And even the driveway has been altered slightly compared to the original driveway. This is what the house looks like today. And as you can see, it is a completely different layout. Now, while I was here walking up the street, since this is a wealthy neighborhood, they have a heightened neighborhood watch. And the gentleman that lives in this house here came out and asked me what I was doing. I explained to him what I was doing, and he proceeded to tell me that, that the man who lived in this house before him had a daughter named Victoria who was a singer, and they named this street here after his daughter Victoria. Now here's an image of the old house. You can see it here. You can see where the tennis court was. You can see over here where the swimming pool was. You can see the driveway coming up through here. And I attempted to put an overlay on it of the new house. So I'm going to slide this over and see if I can slowly fade the new house in over it. I'm going to go like this. You can see what the new house and new location looks like. But as I fade it back to about right here you can see the new house and you can see the outline of the old house right here you can see where the tennis court once was and how the new structure covers what once was the tennis court you can see over here where the swimming pool used to be and it is either covered by a i don't know if that's a garage or a guest house right here over here you can see where the front steps once were and those front steps would have been very close to the center of the swimming pool. You can see the new driveway coming up through here a little tighter turn, whereas the old driveway went a little further out. And a tiny portion of it is being covered by the modern day swimming pool right here. But this gives you an idea of, of what the new structure looks like right here compared to the old structure right here. And I'll blend this all the way. You can see it there one more time. New structure. Old structure. Blended. So there you have it. The Heaven's Gate home location in Rancho Santa Fe, San Diego, California. Right here on Google Earth.